have to say. <laughs> I would have to say. Um, I don't know. I, I don't really um, ever not enjoy playing with you guys. It's always fun. Um, no, there was, what's rad about these guys is, uh, is uh, there's, there's never a bad bad show. I'll come off stage thinking, yeah, I don't know if that... And they're like, oh, it was fucking ace, wasn't it? Just, that was my person that was so into it. He said, oh, he's an inspiration. Fuck it out. <laughs> Samir Skundorf actually said that was his inspiration. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to be the best drummer in our band. It's amazing. Where are these people coming from? You know what I mean? Mine was um, doing Top of the Pops uh, with the Chili Peppers and then getting a helicopter, which Mark flew, flew. down to Exeter to do a gig and then getting the helicopter back and then doing an after show party where the helicopter pilot came to the party and thought, well, this is quite cool. We've now got a helicopter pilot coming to the party. And they wouldn't let Jason in. True story, Jason did a record cut. Well, I didn't even know there was a record cut after show party. Yeah, he did a big moon on because you weren't allowed in. But it's, you know, it's not surprising. Uh, Mark? I was on the helicopter. We won a Grand Award, didn't we? That was good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. My favourite uh, memory of the Grand Award. <laughs> and uh, we got to find out where Eddie Van Halen lived, didn't we? When we recorded our first album, we, we kind of got well, turned away. Going from not having a record deal to suddenly being in LA recording in the same studio as Snoop Dogg next door. So I thought in how he's building in LA, that's pretty cool. Yeah. What did you want to say, Jase? Um, our first ever Kerrang Awards we went to, well, we've been to a few and then we stopped going. Um, first one, Kerry King from Slayer comes out of the toilet and um, I'm like, all right, Kerry. And he's like, is that your brother in there? I went, yeah. He goes, he needs to go home. <laughs> so I walk in the toilet and I'm just face down and he's on sick. And Manly Manson's doing this, prodding him. He's like, Kerry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brian. He's checking if Adam's still alive. And Carrie King's told me to take him home. Anyway, that was one year. And that was... Uh, the Kerrang Awards kick off... Yeah, they had to push you in into a cab. Yeah, but the Kerrang Awards... They had, um, they had the the Kerrang Awards started at three. This was four. He <laughs> <laughs> was having me bed by half four. He <laughs> pissed up and it's daylight still. Yeah. He's really... And then in, in second year, we were at the Kerrang Awards and we thought, well, we'll take it easy this year. Because Adam's a bit of a grabber. But he, like... <laughs> it's like sometimes if you go, you know, if you get in, I don't know, a party, a party or an airline lounge or something, if it looks like something's free, even though you've paid for it, he needs to have everything. Or a hotel, I've got to say everything. Oh, yeah, he has to use everything in the hotel, every switch. You know, the only time he's not used everything in a room was when we were on a ferry between Sweden and Helsinki, and he refused to use a shower because he's like, the spent. Millions of waterproof in this boat. I'm not turning the water on this side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing he's never used in his hotel room. He wants, but he puts a hairdryer on and just has it on. He's like, well, I'll pay for it. I'm using it. <laughs> Dan used to um, dry his bum and his balls in the hairdryer because he's so hairy he couldn't use a towel. <laughs> not you, Dan. Dan Carter. Anyway, so the second Kerrang Awards, <laughs> that's not Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> it would be mental if like, Dan's in the fly right now. <laughs> like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> anyway, he's in the air. Anyway, the second Kerrang Awards were sitting there and we're all at, had a little bit to drink, but we're not hammered or anything. And um, Gary Newman's sitting over there. Adam's like, wait, is that rough here? And Adam's like, I I'm going to go speak to Gary Newman and watch this. What's he? <laughs> so we're all watching it. And he gets up, this is true. He gets up and goes to Gary Newman, and he doesn't know what to say. And Gary Newman's standing there, and Adam just goes up to him and just goes, In cars. <laughs> that was it. And then, do you remember there's a band called Croup Dogdrill? Do you remember them? Yeah. So Pete, the singer from Croup Dogdrill, sang Kerrang World, he's sitting there. Angus Young from ACDC is sitting on some table over there. He didn't even look at the table because Angus is sitting there. And every time you look across at Angus, there's two or three people waiting to speak to him. 
So you're like, oh, you know, I don't want to be that kind of bloke. Tiny, look really old but friendly, happy. And um, Pete's like, for about an hour, he's like, I'm going to speak to Angus. Yeah, one question to ask him. I've wanted to meet him my whole life. Anyway, I looked up and went, mate, there's nobody with Angus. He's like, this is it, I'm off. And he belts over to Angus's table. And we're just watching him. And we can see him talking. And he comes back and he just sits down and goes, oh my God. I was like, what's wrong? How did that go? You know, never meet your heroes and all. He goes, yeah, I had one question to ask him. So what did you ask him? He said, uh, where'd, you, where'd you school uniform, mate? <laughs> And you're just sitting there going, oh, I can't believe it. Like, since I was 12, I've been waiting to be And I just got to him and that's what I asked him. Where's your school uniform, mate? To Angus Show. He's put his looks up and went, what? Oh. Yeah. 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 Unlike the drummer who's a murderer. <laughs> yeah, good drummer. <laughs> well, I was murdered if you ate gigs, anyway. Talking of meeting your heroes, Dougie met David Attenborough, didn't you, Doug? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the Krang Awards. <laughs> I got to interview him. Um, I've got the, I recorded it as well. I got to share a car with him, and I just made up that I was interviewing him for GQ magazine. It was the first magazine that came to my head. And he was like, "Yes, yes, okay, yes." Um, and it was fun. He was, he was literally, he was everything I wanted him to be and more. Um, he was, um, I mean, his knowledge is fucking insane. He talked to me for about 25 minutes just about ants. I mean, I'm, I'm really fucking into ants, so I was, I was, I was jizzing my pants. I loved it. Um, probably surrounded by ants, like we're low enough. Yeah, pro probably. Oh, like, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I did. I got. I asked him like loads of those really what I thought were good questions, and um, then we were just about to pull up at the the venue where he was doing a talk, and um, I ran out of questions, so I was like, I thought, ah. Oh, this really the last like lame one I had was what's your favourite animal? <laughs> and he went, uh, well that all depends on who's asking the question. If it was a six year old I would say something interesting like a weedy sea dragon. But if you really want to know what gets my eyes moistening and my heart thumping, it's looking into the eyes of a newborn baby human being. Oh, That's oh, the most interesting oh, feature on the planet. Oh, genius. Yeah, I thought that was <laughs> <laughs> so are we animals? <laughs> I thought we were rebels. When I met Jimmy Savile, he said that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Too far. <laughs> <laughs>